was that um, there was tampering of evidence that was used in trial. So there were four images of the Silk Road Forum database that were made for use in trial presented to the jury. And now we have found proof that they were tampered with because they were wiped of communications between Red Pirate Roberts and, and supposedly a law enforcement agent named Not Wonderful, um, who was, and the conversations involved um, uh, Not Wonderful selling Dread Pirate Roberts information about the government's investigation into Silk Road. Um, and there was a file folder showing these payments. Um, so this, what happened was there were these images lacking this conversation, and then there was this fifth image that was put away in an obscure file buried in under six terabytes that was discovered. And um, it shows these conversations. So somebody went in to the other files and wiped those conversations, but they didn't know about that fifth image in that obscure file. So somebody who had the ability and the motive to go in there and remove that did it. Now there's very few people who do have that ability, did have that ability, because they had to have high level administrative access. Jared Duryagan, who Daryl Perry mentioned, who was an agent who was investigating Silk Road undercover as Cirrus, had the ability. I'm not saying he didn't. I'm just saying he had the ability. Um, I don't know who else did in law enforcement, but he did. Um, and um, we don't know who did it. Um, the other interesting thing about the timing is that these conversations between Not Wonderful and Red Pirate Roberts stopped completely, as far as we can tell, on uh, August 15th until October 1st when the site was shut down. That's six weeks before Ross was arrested. Those conversations were gone. We assume there were conversations because Not Wonderful was still being paid all through that time and those payments didn't show up. So we don't know what was said, but they're very crucial weeks because first of all, the defense theory is that during that time, Ross was set up. Um, also, um, during that time, and that, he, that Dread Part Roberts executed an exit <coughs> strategy by setting up Ross. But also during that time, DHS Maryland, where the two corrupt agents who are now in prison, Force and Bridges, were operating, met with Mark Carpellis' lawyers, and um, who offered them a deal. The lawyers said to them, look, if you back off Carpellis, our client, we'll give you Dread Pirate Roberts' name. That's all we know about that meeting. This was brought forward at trial. It was part of the um, testimony by Duryagan that the judge said to the jury, forget you ever heard this. But we know that Ross was arrested two weeks later. And we know that they didn't pursue Carpellis. So something happened at that meeting, and that was during that same six weeks that uh, was wiped. We don't have any uh, record of the conversation. So we don't really know what happened. It was, sounds shady to me. There's a lot of unexplained things. What we do know, without any doubt, is that this establishes that the digital evidence in this case is, has been tampered with, and that it lacks integrity. And, you know, Ross's lawyer told me a long time ago that we only know the tip of the iceberg when it comes to this uh, corruption in this case. And by finding these, this hidden folder with this tampering, here we have another big chunk of an iceberg. Um, you know, evidence tampering, another Dread Pirate Roberts logging in. If this backup of the forum database had not been made and saved and then found, no one would be the wiser, no one would know a thing about it. And um, if those logins hadn't been found, no one would know. So this begs the question, what else is there? You know, there's no way to know. We may never know because it's the nature of digital evidence. It's so easily deleted, tampered with, you know, made to disappear without a trace. It's not like there's fingerprints and all of that, DNA and all of that. It's just easily changed and planted and deleted. So we don't know what else there is. We do know there's some things. And that Ross, my son, or anybody should be in a cage for their whole life based on evidence this flimsy, this vulnerable, especially when it's been corrupted, is just a travesty of justice. And I feel like it puts us all in peril. 
that this is happening. So we need help. I'm always asking for help. Um, we're just a family, and uh, it's unbelievably difficult and expensive to fight the federal government. Um, and uh, so any ways you can help, there's t-shirts out there and posters, a poster of um, the trial through Ross's eyes that he drew that um, is, you can buy and just different ways. Um, donate, of course, is always great. Or even um, volunteer, you know, get a hold of me at freeross.org. You know, we're just welcome any help we can get. Um, we're not gonna give up. And right now, um, we're waiting for the appellate court to decide whether it's right for the uh, whether it was right for the um, judge in the trial to not allow evidence about corrupt agents, whether that was okay, whether it's okay for the Fourth Amendment not to be honored in the warrants, and whether it's okay to give somebody a life sentence that's totally out of the norm for something that is completely nonviolent and where there's all these questions. So we're just waiting and we'll see what they say. So if anybody has any questions. Thanks for coming and watching and being here.